So that's, I feel like that is something that I've always kind of struggled with. And I'm going to, I'll try and be a little honest here because I feel like one of my weaknesses as a, if you, an artist or a creator or whatever as you want to call it is collaboration. So you learn going through school and especially in film school and everything is that you have to collaborate. Projects are always stronger when you collaborate with people, um, learn to work as a team, learn to figure out what, and that's sort of what school is about, learning to figure out what your, your aptitudes and your interests are and if and how to cultivate those and like sort of what you're good at and what everyone else is good at and how to fix, fit it together and build a good team. And I feel like some of the most successful people that I've seen come out of film school or, or any school, I'm just saying film school because that's what I was around, are people who learn to build relationships and, and sort of build a symbiosis and figure out what everyone's good, good at and just let each other be good at it and just use each other. And not, you're not really using each other. You're just allowing each other to be good at what you're being good at and acknowledging it and not trying to do something that someone else is better at than you are, um, at, least on a, when you're, at least on a project. So I had a hard time with that because I grew up kind of, and my dad's the same way. He's a super independent person. He works by himself. He's had employees from time to time, but he's always kind of struggled with because he's developed his own ways of doing things, and, and they work when he's working by himself. But when he's working with other people, they don't necessarily work. You need a different set of tools and different systems and stuff. So I kind of grew up the same way because I had to figure out how to do things on my own. So then when you're thrown with a group of people, the tendency is to like, oh, I just want to do it myself. Like I can already see how I'm going to do it. I understand how I'm going to do it. I know it's going to work. I'm just going to not communicate and do it myself. Um, and I still have that kind of attitude. Like I still have a really independent attitude and I like working by myself. And sometimes I feel like when I collaborate on a project, I'm not as happy with the result. But sometimes it's more important to learn how to communicate and kind of give up the ego or whatever you want to call it and, um, and share a creative experience with somebody else. So that's always been a pretty big struggle with me. And I, I, I never really admit I hate it in school. I never admitted it. I just, because in school, they always, a lot of the teachers talk down about people who want to do everything themselves. Because a lot of people who go to film school just, they want to do everything themselves. They want to write, they want to direct, they want to um, they want to edit. And realistically, it's very, very difficult to do that. There's some directors that do it and do it pretty well, like Robert Rodriguez. Um, uh, one of my favorite directors, uh, Steven Soderbergh, he actually does a lot of his uh, DP or cinematography himself and he'll actually uh, operate a lot of cameras himself. His argument is that it allows him to get a lot more closer with, his, with, his, uh, with the actors and he can get closer to them and sometimes he can get so close because he can just whisper into their ear some direction or something like that, which is really cool, but um, it's really rare. and. Uh, and I, I think there is something very important in being able to just learn how to com commun communicate with, with uh, your team and learn how to take the, the things that you know that you want to see or develop or whatever and learn how to articulate those so somebody else can understand it and help you out because you're going to get exhausted if you try and do everything yourself. The first, the first one is how competitive is it, it is. I would say that it's... You, it's very, very, very rare to not have to work for free. I guess that's in a lot of industries and everything. Once you, once you kind of get out of college, you're kind of expected to do an internship or a residency and kind of put in some time for free. I got very lucky because I had some teachers that I built good relationships that really liked me, and they got me some jobs on set working as a runner, or I got to work in the G&E department, Griffin Electric, so you're basically hauling lights around and stuff like that. And... I luckily I got some paid work um, and uh, but it's it's usually really difficult and you figure out really quickly if you if you uh, it's it's super high paced at least working on set um, how I got individual effects is kind of it's different. I kind of just fell into it because I needed a job and then someone started having me do Photoshop work and copying and pasting PDF files and stuff and then 
I just started playing with the programs that were there. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I looked over at what other people were doing. I was like, this is really cool too. I kind of want to learn how to do that. So the whole visual effects stuff, I just kind of, I didn't go to school for it, but I just kind of got interested in it and realized that I really liked it and had had a, a, a knack for it. But working on set is, uh, it's the hardest job I've ever had. And I've uh, done, I've worked at a lumber yard all through high school and I worked in construction and everything before. It's a standard 12 hour day six days a week when you're when you're in production of course you're probably only in production for depending on what kind of film it is like a couple months or whatever so i feel like you have to have kind of a an not i don't want to say neurotic attitude but you have to have you have to be really be able to be really intense when you're working and then be able to relax when you're off and enjoy your your time when you're off um what else was i going to say so I think that's I, that's a really big challenge. It's just the how competitive it is, and um, that's why going back to building relationships, um, getting work or being able to get work in the industry and everything. It's it's foremost who you know and the relationships you build. All the jobs I got were because I I built relationships with people and we we liked each other and everything. Then secondly, it's how hard you work and your, your work ethic and your attitude at work. Because if, if you're a jerk and you're, you're, uh, you don't have a good work ethic and you're like, I don't want to carry that light over there. Like, I'm, I'm trying to write my thesis film right now. I don't want to mess around with moving these stupid pieces of equipment around. Like, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to do that. I want to direct. Um, if you have that kind of attitude, I don't care how good you are at directing. You're probably not going to get a chance to direct because... Uh, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna really want to give you a shot if you're walking around thinking you're better than everybody else so those three things were super important is first first building relationships and um, secondly your work ethic and then thirdly if you actually have talent so those are yeah probably the most prominent challenges i would i would think of my name is alma beltran i'm derek riley and i'm jack prescott my name is Elise Faso. And I'm Ben Prescott.